Man, you need some Liberty Stickers for the back of your truck. At LibertyStickers.com, they've got great state hate, like Pearl Harbor was an inside job. The Democrats want your guns. U.S. Army, die for Israel. Police brutality, not just for black people anymore. And government school, why you and your kids are so stupid. Check out these and a thousand other great ones at LibertyStickers.com. And of course, they'll take care of all your custom printing for your band or your business at TheBumperSticker.com. That's LibertyStickers.com. Everyone else's stickers suck. All right, y'all, welcome back. I'm Scott Horton. This is my show, Scott Horton Show. Our first guest today is Grant F. Smith. He uh, runs the Institute for Research, Middle Eastern Policy. And mostly what that means is he does uh, Freedom of Information Act, etc., to get the documents to uh, show the history of the Israeli government's, and f- before that, really, the Zionist movement's criminality inside the United States in uh, gaining all of the military and economic and political support that they've got. Uh, it's crooked. I tell you, not just uh, democracy in action. He does, too. He shows it with the documents. The latest book is Divert, which is, of course, about the Israeli government, uh, a crime ring that includes the current prime minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, stealing weapons-grade uranium from the United States, um, from a, a nuclear plant in Pennsylvania, and leaving uh, a mess behind, a, a radioactive mess behind as well. Um and now, so uh, you've got this new lawsuit, and you're saying you're uh, awaiting action, I guess. So right. uh, the law right. says, and maybe they have to obey this law. I don't know, that there's a time limit on uh, how quickly they must respond to your lawsuit. And, and by the way, who all is they that you're suing here? Yeah, sure. Um, well, basically, this is another uh, Freedom of Information Act action, but this is actually a federal lawsuit now because – um, after appealing for a file which reveals a lot of wrongdoing, they basically uh, did a runaround for two years, which is far in excess of the time they had to respond. We finally filed a lawsuit in the D.C. District Court demanding uh, that a federal judge find that, in this case, the Department of Defense uh, violated the Freedom of Information Act uh, and uh, requesting that a federal judge order them to release the uh, document that we've asked for. Um, the file is a study about development of nuclear weapons in Israel uh, at Technion University, designing nuclear missile reentry vehicles, uh, and work at Dimona Nuclear uh, Facilities. Uh, Hebrew University's computer science is working at SOREC to develop uh, a computer code to develop hydrogen bombs. And the Wiseman Institute, which has really been a key cornerstone, uh, primordial organization in, in Israel's nuclear weapons development program, um, their uh, use uh, of or their study of high energy physics and hydrodynamics for nuclear bomb design and laser enrichment uh, for uh, making uh, making more uh, weapons grade uranium. So uh, these are organizations that we've written about for a long time. Uh, they appear in that latest book, Divert, the Wiseman Institute was very uh, influential in raising money. Uh, under Abraham Feinberg, who is a, a super lobbyist who funded all sorts of things. First, uh, he worked on conventional weapons smuggling and then nuclear funding for Israel. Um, we want the, this, this DOD report for a number of reasons. Um, essentially, we want them to stop pretending uh, to the public that they don't know anything about Israel's nuclear weapons program. Um, you know, you've seen recently just a, a small trickle of documents from the Nixon administration grappling with what what they should tell the U.S. and how they should act when the lobbies start pressuring them uh, when they when they reacted to Israel's development of nuclear weapons. But we don't we we don't want. Uh, them to continue to pretend that Israel doesn't have a nuclear weapons program, that it didn't acquire a lot of illicit support from various groups in the United States. 
and we want to have a more public discussion about those Israeli nuclear weapons, just like they have inside the government. So as taxpayers with every right to obtain, in particular, unclassified uh, U.S. government documents, we've requested this, and we intend to use it to challenge U.S. foreign assistance to Israel under the Symington and Glenn Amendments to the Foreign Assistant Act, the United States Congress simply is prohibited from providing any aid to states that are operating outside the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty. So we want to bring this document, you know, extract it from the Pentagon and bring it to Congress and the president and the public and say, why aren't we following the law to quash nuclear proliferation in the Middle East? Um, you can't really have accountability when you have not only documents like this, again, unclassified yet mysteriously bottled up inside the government uh, for decades and decades and nobody going after them. So we really want to release this document publicly, put it in our archive along with all of the other files that you've uh, mentioned, and have a broader public discussion about the Israeli nuclear weapons program and what that means for the United States and also have more accountability for these illicit activities, which seem to be protected somehow um, and always overlooked when it, whenever it comes to any sort of uh, accountability proceeding, whether it's in the courts or, you know, restrictions on aid or any sort of public uh, pronouncement. So that's what the that's what the lawsuit is about. And the government has until tomorrow. Now, we're no longer asking them to respond. They have to respond tomorrow in court. Mm. All right, well, we got to stop and take this dumb break. We'll be right back, everybody, with Grant F. Smith from the Institute for Research, Middle East Policy. Uh, Follow-up questions. they got a bunch of them. It's the Scott Horton Show. Hey, all Scott here. If you're like me, you need coffee, lots of it, and you probably prefer it taste good, too. Well, let me tell you about Darren's Coffee Company at darrenscoffee.com. Darren Marion is a natural entrepreneur who decided to leave his corporate job and strike out on his own, making great coffee. And Darren's Coffee is now delivering right to your door. Darren gets his beans direct from farmers around the world, all specialty, premium grade, with no filler. Hey, the man just wants everyone to have a chance to taste this great coffee. Darren's Coffee. Order now at darrenscoffee.com. Use promo code SCOTT and save $2. Darrenscoffee.com. All right, y'all. Welcome back to the show. I'm Scott Horton. This is my show, Scott Horton Show. I'm talking with Grant F. Smith from the Institute for Research, Middle Eastern Policy. That's I-R-M-E-P dot org. I-R-M-E-P dot org. He's the author of a great many books about the Israel lobby. The latest is Divert about how they stole weapons-grade uranium. The uh, the Israeli government and its agents stole weapons-grade uranium from the United States of America. And now uh, we're talking about this lawsuit that he's got for an old study conducted for the Department of Defense about, uh, uh, correct me if I go off the story here, I think I got it right, Grant. It's Israeli charities that have branches here in the United States that are raising money and then spending that money on research done in the United States on helping the Israelis develop their <clears throat> illicit secret nuclear weapons program. Is that correct? Uh, actually, the research is done in Israel. The fundraising oh, okay. yeah, is done through American friends organizations uh, of the... Uh, in, uh, of the uh, the ones I mentioned, Hebrew yes. University, Weizmann Institute, etc. And now, I think it's uh, an important point to make, that when you talk about hydrogen bombs, I mean, it sort of sounds like, yeah, yeah, this and that kind of atom bomb, different kinds of atom bombs. But as Daniel Ellsberg likes to point out, a Nagasaki-type, uh, an implosion uh, plutonium fission bomb, is just the blasting cap for an H-bomb. H-bombs, which are measured in the megatons worth of TNT exploding, that could kill your entire city in one shot. Uh, far worse. I mean, uh, well, Hiroshima, that was 10 kilotons. So an right. H-bomb could kill Houston. Uh, right. That's Measured the kind of weapons that we're megaton. talking about here. Exactly. It's It's a whole different magnitude of weapon. And I think it's, again... It's surprising to see the, the frankness and clarity uh, of these, essentially, these are leaks of the contents of, of the document. 
um, about how sophisticated and you know grandiose the development programs are. Yeah, well, um, and you know, I wonder about this, uh, Daniel Ellsberg, and I've asked him about this two or three or four times just to make sure I got my footnote one hundred percent solid. He says that Mordecai Venunu told him, and Venunu, of course, is the famous Israeli nuclear whistleblower, uh, that Venunu told him that Israel had as many as 600 nuclear weapons, including H-bombs, which would have been way back then even. Um, and, and yet every other estimate I see is, oh, they may have as many as 85 or 100. Or I guess there's, I think, an Air Force study that says they may have as much as 400. That's the highest number I've ever seen anywhere else. And I wonder whether you know. Is there a CIA estimate anywhere? Is there any kind of official number inside the U.S. government that says, or do you have any other better source or, or best source for how many nukes you think they already have? Well, you know, there are numbers all over the place from different sources. I have seen most of them, and of course, uh, you didn't add Jimmy Carter, who said that they had at least 300. So, mm-hmm. as a former, you know, commander in chief, you would think that he would know. Mm-hmm. Um, there's what there isn't any doubt about is that they do have uh, a sophisticated, deployed second strike capability arsenal mm-hmm. uh, that they've been working on for a very long time. So, second strike you know, meaning submarines. Right, submarine launch. So, you know, you've got all sorts of, you know, the cat's been out of the bag for a long time. The CIA studies have been declassified showing that the Israelis are practicing the types of bombing runs that only make sense if you're delivering nuclear weapons. Um, you've got, you know, the purchase of, of submarines and their modification. You've got the you know, the all of the evidence about the uranium diversion. You've got diversions of yellow cake. Uh, you know, it's the 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 inability of the American press and American government officials to talk about this is is probably one of the most galling things uh, currently, especially as everybody's talking about this non-existent program in Iran. So, um, you know, the 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 goal, of course, is to get more clarity. Um, the goal, of course, is to get some accountability as well and, and really find out, you know, what are the numbers, uh, who's going to pay for the waste cleanups, where's the waste going, uh, what is the, you know, what's the purpose of this arsenal, why is the United States continually thwarting regional conferences to go for a, a weapons-free zone, why all of this uh, unbalanced uh, hype about other powers in the region acquiring nuclear weapons and and you know how do you prevent well now, okay so let me ask you though weapon. i mean yeah. it seems like i mean it's true that we we have a very limited discussion here in in this country where our politicians don't like to admit that they have nukes and that kind of thing so that's i guess kind of a secondary point but does it make sense though from an israeli point of view or even from an american point of view american government point of view to agree with israel that it's better to have this position of ambiguity where everybody knows they have them but they're not a declared nuclear weapon state because if they were then that would have all these other repercussions like then once it's official there will be more political pressure on say the egyptians or the saudis or the iranians or others to go ahead and create nuclear weapons arsenals of their own for example another case where we have so-called ambiguity is in the case of taiwan right where everybody sort of believes that we're sworn allies with taiwan but not quite really and we do recognize beijing as the legitimate government of china now at least right and so it's all it's that supposed ambiguity even though it's there's everyone understands what it really means but it's part of the understanding that we don't talk about is there any value in that is what i'm trying to ask you in 10,000 words yeah, there's no value in that whatsoever. Um, you know, essentially, uh, the Israelis have stolen a cudgel from the United States that it can use against us as much as it can against any rival. And I don't mean, of course, launching an attack. I just mean the continual threat that if the United States doesn't do what Israel wants it to do, that it could be forced to use this, you know, fire that Prometheus stole from from the gods, or in this case, you know, stole nuclear technology, weapons, material, and built its own arsenal to do whatever it wants to do, no matter what the United States wants. So I don't think, 
um, the arguments from Israel's perspective about, you know, how good this nuclear umbrella is for the rest of the region have any weight on what the American analysis should be. It's another right. one of these cases where the U.S. interest is completely different than what the Israeli interest is. And you've, you've seen similar arguments be made and discarded in the past with Israel, you know, being positioned as being able to threaten the Soviet Union from the south or being able to do this and do that. And they were always sort of these justifications after the fact mm -hmm. for, you know, having the Samson option and blackmail shit that it can use against the United States. So as a, you know, again, bargaining chit, it's, uh, it's very powerful and it's something that I, it's almost like Stockholm syndrome in the United States where the victim, uh, of all of the theft and all of the demands for being quiet, uh, like congressmen have, have, uh, pretty much acquiesced to their hostage taker and, and won't, uh, you know, are just, they won't, they won't challenge the lobbies and other forces that are, telling them to, to shut up about this. But, you know, even even some of the people who have done the best work researching this, like Abner Cohen, uh, whose book on Amiot and the worst kept secret and all of that has said it's, you know, it's it's far past time to drop this entire crumbling pretense that nobody knows what's going on. It doesn't serve public debate and it's never served the American interest. Mm -hmm. Well, now, yeah, I mean, it's funny. I wonder how different the debate would be. It seems like uh, the American government is bound to go along with whatever the Israeli prime minister and, and his cabinet happen to want at any given time in the name of swearing to protect the very existence of Israel, which is really an entirely separate thing from just because they claim every single thing is an existential matter doesn't mean it really is. And I guess if we had to, if the U.S. government had to come out and say, okay, yes, it's true, they have so many H-bombs that no one could possibly threaten their existence ever without, you know, risking their own anyway. That's deterrent enough. Uh, maybe we wouldn't have to be bound to their policy whatsoever at that point. Maybe that's yeah, well, the, the biggest reason for, for this so-called ambiguity, so that America has to pretend yeah. that we got to protect Israel from all their sock puppet neighboring uh, friendly dictatorships. Yeah, I I don't know the 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 cat's been out of the bag. The people who need to know have been warned, and and they know you know that Israel's got an an arsenal. So. No, but I just mean in terms of American public opinion. Like, wait, why do we have to protect these guys all the time when they have all these? Things, you know? <laughs> That's a whole other discussion there. Yeah, I don't know if Americans would even care at all, right? Yeah, who knows? Anyway, listen, we're out of time. Thanks so much for your time. It's great to talk to you again, dude. Thanks, Scott. Thanks a lot. All right, y'all. That's Grant Smith. Uh, check him out at IRMEP, IRMEP.org. The book is Divert. Why does the U.S. support the tortured dictatorship in Egypt? Because that's what Israel wants. Why can't America make peace with Iran? Because that's not what Israel wants. And why do we veto every attempt to shut down illegal settlements on the West Bank? Because it's what Israel wants. Seeing a pattern here? Sick of it yet? It's time to put America first. Support the Council of the National Interest at CouncilForTheNationalInterest.org and push back against the Israel lobby and their sock puppets in Washington, D.C. That's CouncilForTheNationalInterest.org. Hey, Al Scott here for MyHeroesThink.com. They sell beautiful 7-inch busts of libertarian heroes Ludwig von Mises, Murray Rothbard, Ron Paul, and Harry Brown. These finely crafted statues from MyHeroesThink.com make excellent decorations for your desktop at work, bookends for your shelves, or gifts for that special individualist in your life. They're also all available in colors now, too. Of course, gold, silver, or bronze. Coming soon, Hayek, Hazlitt, Carlin. Use promo code Scott Horton and save $5 at MyHeroesThink.com. Hey, Al Scott here for Whole Food Multicomplete at WholeFoodComplete.com. Whole Food Multicomplete is an entire supplement program in one bottle containing 100% RDA of vitamins and minerals plus live probiotics, digestive enzymes, antioxidant herbs, energy nutrients, and more. It's made in America using real foods and live probiotics, no chemical synthetics. It's soy-free, gluten-free, and independently tested and verified. They're so sure you'll love it, they're taking 20% off your first order with coupon code Scott Horton. Satisfaction is guaranteed at WholeFoodComplete.com.